Welcome to parts of a circle and the circumference of a circle. Here we have a circle I have drawn. I've used a 20 cent Australian piece to draw this circle, so you might want to use your own coin to draw your circle. Here is the diameter. The diameter goes through the centre and is the distance between one side of the circle to the other, while the radius goes from the centre to one side. So you can see the radius is half the diameter. The circumference is the distance all the way around the circle. It's the circle's perimeter and only part of that is called the arc. Here I've drawn it with a little bit of pen. And right in the middle you've got the centre. While the tangent is a line outside the circle which touches the side of the circle. And a chord doesn't go through the centre. What it does is it goes th between two points of the circumference, the side of the circle. Now we have something called sectors, a little bit like um, sectors on a radar screen for airplanes. You've got the minor sector, the smaller one, and the major sector. But also we have something called a segment. A segment is a little bit different. It doesn't go through the center, it's part of the circle. So you've got the minor segment and the major segment. Then you have concentric circles, in other words, circles within circles, and semicircles. Just think of a football game, a semi-final, that means there's two games left. So with a semicircle, two semicircles make one circle. And a quadrant, like a quarter, a quadrant, if you've got four quadrants, you've got one circle. And lastly, the angle. So the fraction of a circle is the angle divided by 360 degrees, which is the full circle. So we can measure the circle by saying the diameter equals 2 times the radius. In other words, D equals 2 times R. Or, we can, we, therefore, we know that R equals D divided by 2. Let's have a look at the circumference of a circle. So the circumference of the circle all the way around and its diameter. So if we divide the circumference, that distance, divided by its diameter, we're going to get a value called pi. No matter how big the circle is, we're always going to get pi. And what's pi? Pi is a Greek letter, but it represents this number. 3.14159265, etc., etc., etc. It's a number that never stops. It's a transcendental number. But what we can do, we can use the pi to work out the circumference. So, 2 times the radius times pi will give us the circumference. Therefore, the circumference equals c equals 2 pi r. Let's have a go. Find the circumference. So here we have a diameter of 19 centimetres. And we know our rule is 2 pi r. So instead of timesing 2 pi r, because we've got the full diameter, all we need to do is pi times the diameter. So pi times 19 will give us the circumference, the distance all the way around the circle, 59.7 centimetres. In the second example, it's a little bit different. It's the radius. So the radius is 4.2 metres. So here we go. The circumference equals 2 pi r and c equals 2 pi times pi times 4.2, which equals 26.4 metres, not centimetres, it's metres. And in our, in our last example today, we have an unusual, a very unusual shape. Here we have four semicircles, and it, and it creates a square. Now, don't get confused by the square. We're concentrating on the circumference, the outside edge. Okay, But we know that 2 pi r, or 2 times pi times 82, is not going to work because the 82 millimetres is not the radius of the, um, each semicircle. It's the diameter. That's not going to work. But also, there are four semicircles. Therefore, there are two circles because two semicircles make up one circle. Let's have a go. The circumference of one would equal pi times d, so pi times 82, 
which equals 257.6106, and we times it by 2 because there are two full circles, which gives us the answer, which is 515.2 millimetres, not centimetres. You've got to be really careful. Good luck.